with the wonderful tank. How are you doing today? Good. Sir? Good. I wish I had like a, a sex bird in front of my name. <laughs> sex bird tank. Well, I mean, you're kind of a sex bird since you, you know, you're a master of R&B. So. Yeah, yeah. Before I get into all of the burning questions you guys are wondering, I just want to talk a little bit about Tank and his new project coming out May 8th. Yes. So uh, this is how I feel. What would you say you drew your inspiration from this time around for the album? Um, just from good music, man. I just wanted to, you know, choose the records that I liked, that I loved, the records that I knew were hot, the, the subject matter that I knew was different, the melodies that I thought were just, you know, off the chain, and I just wanted to use them. I didn't want to be trapped in to a subject matter or to, you know, married to too much of anything to where I couldn't just use great music. And so this this album kind of reflects um, just the journey that I took, you know, to get all of the music that I got. You know, I mean, it's not just one thing, but it's a bunch of things. It's something for everybody to grab a hold to. And, um, you know, it'll speak to everybody's feelings at some particular point in time. Okay, so um, what can we all expect to hear on the album? Like what collaborations, what kind of sound? Um, I got a more, I got some more aggressive stuff on this one. Uh, me, and, me and Chris Brown did a record called Lonely that's definitely, you know, waiting on Rick Ross and Meek Mills to jump on it. Which you know I definitely mean? do love. Some yeah, of my thank you. Um, me and uh, the homie T.I. along with Mars, Chris Stevens, we did a record together that, um, T minus producer, you know, he does all the Drake and Lil Wayne and all of that stuff. So he, you know, using his records with that kind of energy with my thing on it made it sound great. And then I did another one, Busta Rhymes. Nice. You know what I mean? He gave me that, he gave that, gave me that, baby, if you give it to me. You know, he gave, <laughs> right. he gave me that flow, which made the record extra sexy as well. So um, we got a, a lot of great moments on it. Okay, well, I'm definitely looking forward to hearing more of that. So, this is my question. A lot of people say that R&B has lost its luster. Some even say that R&B is a dying genre. So what do you feel you're bringing on um, This Is How I Feel that can kind of bring some luster back into what is said to be a dying genre? Well, I think the R&B that I made on this album is competing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's competing with some of the mainstream records, you know what I mean, and stuff like that. And sonically, it's making sense to a generation that needs to hear R&B. Like, you know, the, the, everything changes and evolves. So the sound that we're so accustomed to hearing in R&B is, is kind of faded, you know what I mean? Only because of, you know, a lot of different things, right? whether it be radio programming, whether it be just hip hop just taking over and smashing everything, you know, whether it be four on the floor really making just a major uh, impact on music, whether it be house making a resurgence, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All of these factors have an impact on how much R&B is actually heard. Right. So in, so in order to actually get your R&B heard, you have to kind of find a way to sneak your way in. Right. You know what I mean? And so, this is how I feel it does that, you know what I'm saying? It sneaks me in without compromising who I am right. and what I do and the integrity of the music that I do. So when you hear it, you're going to say, okay, yeah, that beat sounds like, you know, they could have gave that to Ross, but right. the song that I'm singing over top of it talks about me being heartbroken, being in a club, popping bottles, throwing up ones, girls all around, but at the end of the day, none of this really matters because the girl over there who just broke up with me who looks like she's just having the time of her life, that's what's really on my mind. That's what's right. really got me in shambles and all, with all this money and all this everything I got, I can't seem to get myself together because in all honesty, I'm alone. Right. And you I noticed that. Big old club. I noticed that man. when I sampled some of the music on your website, mm -hmm. I was like, man, I'm feeling this because it's R&B, but it's, it's current. But it's you don't sound like 1995, which exactly. I love 95, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the generation of today can't gotta connect with it. They can't connect with it. So you yeah. got to have something to sneak, you know what I'm saying, to sneak in the door with and say, hey, I'm with you. Right. I get what you're going through, I get what you're dealing with at the time, but I'm going to also give you some history once you get in here, you right. know what I mean? So we're definitely going to have home economics, we're going to cook a little bit, right. but I'm also throw some of this science on you too, you know what I'm saying, and let you understand where all these ingredients even come from. Right. So, what would you say is your favorite song on the album and why? Wow. wow. Every artist has a favorite song, if you have a favorite song on the album. I don't have a favorite song. You don't? I don't have a favorite song. Well, I mean, uh, maybe I, you want to grow on you, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I have, I mean, 
the, I spend my favorite. A lot of them are so different. The Lonely Record is one of my favorite records. I mean, it's one of my favorites too. So uh, it's one of my favorite records. And then I have a song, another song called Better Than Me. Mm -hmm. That is one of my favorites as well. Oh. Totally different ends of the spectrum. Right. But. Well, I'll be looking forward to hearing that when the album comes out on May 8th. Yes. Make sure you cop that. This is how I feel May 8th. So now we're going to get a little more into the uh, romance and love oh, questions, oh, which man. most of my fans I know are dying to hear about. So, you know, you are an R&B singer. R&B singers are seen as like the masters of love. So what would, you, what would you say your definition of love is? My definition love is it's the thing that defies all um, it's the thing that keeps you from giving up um, it's the thing that keeps you motivated even when you don't like a person huh. yeah. um, it's the savior of all it's the love you know what I mean at the end of the day um, if I didn't love what I do as an R&B artist, I wouldn't be able to do it because when you really look at it in the grand scheme of things, for what I have to go through and what I've had to go through to get to where I am, if I didn't love it, it wouldn't be worth it. So it's that endurance, it's that thing that makes whatever you have to go through worth it. It makes it unconditional. We're just going to see it through because we love each other. So have you ever been in love? I've been in love a lot. Yeah, I welcome love. I'm, you know, I've been heartbroken, but I haven't been hurt by love. I've been hurt by people that I've been in love with. See, I feel that because a lot of people today seem like they're a bit emotionalist because mm -hmm. they say, "Oh, I tried love. I'm not about that life." Yeah, you know. Yeah, love is not love is love is not a life. Right, but to be able to admit as a man that you know you've been hurt, but you've been hurt by people that you were in love with and not by love, I think that. Is a good place to be right. in because people, men and women, never get to that point. Well, you know, and I can say it because I've hurt people that I loved. Mm -hmm. Like, it, I didn't, I did love them. I right. love you. I love you with all my heart. But I messed up. Right. I made a mistake. I made a couple of mistakes. You know what I mean? But I, when it all fell apart, I still loved them. Mm -hmm. Didn't change that. Okay. Just the dynamic of, you know. Where we slept at then. Right. So, questions burning through everybody's minds, mostly women. Maybe some men is already single. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, I, I got a diverse. <laughs> I got a diverse <laughs> fan base. So. Yeah, I know. I mean, and it's fine. It's, it's okay. <laughs> I mean, I um, know. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, to, to you know, I, I support life, liberty, and justice Amen. for all. Uh, there you not go. Not just one. Um, so, yes, I'm single. Okay, and the, the cliche question, but it has to be asked. Mm -hmm. What is your sign? I'm a Capricorn. Oh my God, why you? January 1st. I mean, you've been turned out by one before. I don't know. Probably turned out by one now. Hmm. You know? You probably Moving on to the next question. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah. Get you one. No, I don't get you one. Batteries and cool. <laughs> so, um, what are your favorite attributes? That a woman, physical and personality. I love feet. Um, I love hands. I love smile. Um, I like I like butt cheeks. Butt cheeks. Yeah. I like butt cheeks too. No homo. Yeah. I like I like you know I like legs. You know. Shoot, you like everything. I like you know just to look like you might have walked around the block once or twice. You know? um, but then on the inside, you know. I like I like personality. Like I like character. I like somebody that ain't afraid to, you know, to jump in and crack a few jokes or you know what I'm saying or make some suggestions in the big business meeting or, you know what I mean, uh, spiritually sound. You know what I mean, standing for something, not just falling for anything. Um, I'm just looking for somebody who can help balance me. You know what I'm saying? Somebody when I walk out the room, it's like I never left because they're there. Right. That's how. So, one, just one last question, because I know you got to go, you're, you know, on a schedule. What's some good advice you would give to women who are looking to attract uh, their equal, I guess you could say? Because there's just so many women who are confused about what men with substance look for 
and women? Um, I will first say stop looking so hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's normally like, you know, when you when you get the searching out and running into the wrong places and, and trying to put something together to attract a certain thing, normally you attract the opposite, you know right. what I'm saying? For the most part, like, finding someone good for you, it never really happens the way you think it's going to happen. It never happens the night you go to the club with your girls and decide, you know, I'm just going to let it all hang out. The first man to holler at it, he's going to get it. It never really works out like that. It always works out with maybe both of y'all fighting over a cab and jumping and jumping at the same time. Like, it's my cab. No, it's my cab. Well, why don't we just ride together? And then you have a conversation and find out you have a couple of things in common, a couple of things in common, and you end up going out. You know what I'm saying? It's always those kind of situations. So first, stop looking so hard. And... Um, two, if you feel like you're attracting the wrong thing, that is probably something that you need to change within yourself. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, because the person that you are is generally a reflection. Well, I definitely uh, give you two thumbs up for that answer. And it was a pleasure you. having you on my blog, GlamErotica101.com. Please make sure you get Tank's new album, This Is How I Feel, May, May 8th. 8th. May 8th, May 8th. May 8th, the president will be in the building. The general, R&B, sexy. That is fine. Ladies. I'm the most beautiful girl.